Which brand is making the best polo? Lacoste or Fred Perry? The French man or the English man? We are going to compare both polos. The quality, the construction, the fit, everything. And especially the brand. I mean, the brand in terms of how they evolve over time because you know that brands are changing over time. And I suppose that you probably know that both brands were founded by tennis players. Rene Lacoste and Fred Perry. He won six Grand Slams and seven Grand Slams. To see this in perspective, for example, Rafa Nadal, the tennis player from Spain, got 22 and Djokovic won 24 Grand Slams. I mean, they both were legends. I mean, I'm not a tennis expert. I don't know if they were really good or not, but in this video, we are going to talk about clothing because they both started their own fashion brands. Rina Lacos is considered one of the founders, or one of the inventors of the polo. I mean, there are people that say that polo was invented, you know, to play polo, you not know, to play tennis. There are people that say that Reina Lacoste was actually the first wearing a polo playing tennis on 1926 on the US Open, when he appeared for first time wearing a polo like this one. I mean, probably not like this one, quite different, more with a more regular cut, with different probably material, but it was the first time that someone wearing a PK polo, which is more breathable than a regular shirt that used to be like the uniform of tennis players with short sleeves and this kind of collar that you can turn it up and then you can protect yourself, your skin, because this is for a protective purpose. It's not just the design, I mean, it's part of the design as well, obviously, but it has its functionality. And this logo is considered the first logo that it was stitched to a clothing piece. And it's showing that you are showing you the brand that you are wearing. Because Rene Lacoste was called the crocodile. I mean, there are many references that people say that it was maybe because he was wearing something made of crocodile skin. Others say that it was by the way that he was playing. There are different uh, theories about that. But the thing is, they were the first one or one of the first brands using their logos. And nowadays, a lot of brands are doing the same. I'm, I'm not big, you know, fan of this. I don't like really to be showing the brand like, oh, yeah, look at my brand because I'm not worth it enough. This is my point of view, obviously. Like you are not worth it enough, so then you need to show a brand. You need to show the prestige of a brand that is even better than you, right? And I think that kind of principles are not my principles in terms of clothing. So René Lacoste started his own brand around the 30s, 1933, if I'm not wrong right now, with a Frenchman that it was a French businessman he was specialized in knitwear and they both started growing around the 50s, around 1955, something like that. They started growing a lot. And around that time, Fred Perry saw that this guy, René Lagos, was doing it so well. So he thought, why not? I can also start my own clothing brand. I mean, he also invented like something functional when you're playing tennis, which was the wristband and I think the headband as well and he partnered with a footballer player that both started this brand, Fred Perry brand. And his polo, which was kind of similar to this one, it was a great hit, especially on Wimbledon. They started selling a lot of their polos, but over time, both brands are still alive. Starting for this polo, Lacoste polo, is the classic one, but the slim version is the L1212. It has changed a lot over time because it used to be made in France, then it was used to be made in Spain, and now it doesn't say where it's made. I mean, there are lines that it says made in Peru, but this, this one doesn't say anything. Apparently, this is legal in Europe. I didn't know that. Let me know in the comments below. If you think that 
this should be legal because I think we need to know where things are made because it's part of the transparency of the brand. Even it's funny because Lagos it says, yeah, we are really transparent on our website. You can see how is our process or blah, 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 whatever. But they don't mention even where this is made. And probably it's made in China, China, Vietnam, or you know, any Asian country. It has motor pearl buttons, which is great because it's something natural the only thing is they are in white color they are not in the same color because when there's mother of pearl material it's a bit more difficult to have them in the same color it could be possible because even for suits we do a lot of different colors for mother of pearl but in this case they are white I mean I don't mind about that I do prefer them in the same color but it's it's okay it's made of 100% cotton this material is called petite pique which I think it means like small pique because you can see almost through these small holes. I mean, it looks like a bit more breathable, maybe than other Pique from other brands that are more close, that are not really breathable as probably this one is. But if we have a look of the Fred Perry one, we are going to see that we can also see through these small holes. Even I will say that it's even more transparent the one from Fred Perry than this one from Lacoste. And this one from Fred Perry doesn't say anything like Petit Piquet. Both are made of 100% cotton. Both are considered as PK fabrics. But Fred Perry is made in England. I mean, this is the M12, which is the classic model. It has a regular fit. I didn't find this one in the slim fit. I think they are not making the slim version of this one anymore. The rest of the models that they have, I mean, they have like a line made in England and other lines made somewhere, you know, like Asia or is Europe, depends on the model that you're looking for, but this classic one is still made in the UK, not as this one. I know that Lagos also has a line that is made in France, but it usually is like a limited edition one, it's really expensive. Actually, mentioning about the French limited edition, I went to the store here in Madrid and I asked for the one that is made in France. At the moment, they don't have anything made in France, only like a belt or something like, you know, like small accessories. The price for both of them is almost the same. It's, this one is around 100 pounds. And this one is like a 95 or 100 pounds, depending as well where you get them. But also both have sales. So probably you can get them like 50, 40% discount. We are going to see and we are going to compare them both over time because then is when I'm going to see which one is going to be better. This polo used to be the most resistant one, the better one, but I think this one it looks better. It's still made in England, where it's this brand from, which is good. And I know it doesn't have the mother of pearl buttons, but I don't mind about that. They are plastic buttons with the name on it. I don't mind about that either but it looks better. Even the color, I would say, is more like the material. It feels harder. It's, it feels, because this one, it feels like really loose. I mean, not really loose, but a bit looser than this one. And especially when we are talking about the color of the polo, I think it's really important that the color, it keeps each shape. I mean, the one that I'm wearing right now is different. It's a knitted polo, which is different from the PK one, because this is made of different materials. I mean, it's 100% cotton as well, but this Design, as you can see is different so it's made in a different way than these ones are made but I think the color is really important of polo especially over time especially after maybe five ten washes you're going to see when it's like really loose when it is losing its shape when it's like really open then is when you're going to notice that that polo it doesn't look good anymore and I think over time this one is going to keep its shape better this color because it feels a bit hard. By the way, that kind of lines that we have here are the classic ones when the Fred Perry started designing polos. This is like the signature of its brand. And Fred Perry was associated also with a lot of, you know, underground cultures, even with skinheads, even, even it was, <laughs> was really polemic with, I think it's a group of like the Proud Boys or something like that was called in the United States and they were wearing all of them, the Fred Perry ones with the 
yellow lines, yellow logo, and yellow color here. And Fred Perry decided to stop selling them in America. Let me know what do you think about that, because to me it looks like more like a preppy polo, but it never was like a considerable preppy polo, but it looks like that, even with the logo and everything. On the other side, Lacoste was more considered with the preppy side, I mean not as much as for example Ralph Lauren, which is really like the preppy one. But this one is was more considered, you know, with the old money aesthetic, especially in Europe, I think, and it was considered like the classic polo. And I know that the polos that they were making before, they were really good. They were made really, really well. I think the material was like the best one that you can find in the market because they used to be using Pima. Nowadays they don't mention anything about if it's Pima or not. Even the cotton in the past was better because you know nowadays a lot of the cotton if it's not Pima or Supima, something that it has long fibers, is like with really small fibers probably coming from India or China and I know the quality of the cotton is not the same so maybe it's one of the factors that is making that the polos are not good as they were before. I think this is one of the problems that most of the brands that used to be like good quality are offering now like a worse quality. But the fit are like this one, better than this one, because this one is a slim fit. And as you can see, I am like a kind of thin guy. I mean, I'm not super thin, but I do prefer things more slimmer than regular. But the cut of this one is not bad either. It's kind of okay, especially for summer if you want something a bit more looser, especially if you want something I can breathe more, I think this one is better. Let's see over time which one is going to evolve better. Let me know in the comments below which one do you think is going to be better and if you have any experience with both brands let me know as well in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.